Hey everyone, my name is Neil, and I'm stretching my comfort zone. <laughs> um, I'm a huge fan of Blender. I started out um, way back in the day on DOS programs like Crystal Topaz and 3D Studio <laughs> One. Um, or was it two? I can't remember. Two, three. Might have been three. Okay, so I was wrong twice. Anyhow, I've been doing 3D on PC operating systems for quite a few years, and I kind of wanted to give back to the community because there seems to be an endless amount of tutorials out there willing to teach you how to use a certain software package called Blender. Now, what Blender is, is it's free to use for whatever you want. It's an open or open source program where the community pretty much builds it. Or there's a bit of slight amount of democratic process there, I suppose, but either way, um, I think that's nice because back in the day we had to do some unsavory things to get our hands on software. Um, and I always debated in my head, was it worth stealing a brush to make a painting? Now I don't have to worry about that, because, <clears throat> you know, well, I wasn't really making any money. Haven't yet made any money doing it, but, you know, from what I hear, doing these tutorials are actually um, quite beneficial to getting anywhere, because it's all about networking. Yeah. So, yeah, so I hope you enjoy this. Uh, this is something I developed. I don't know, four years ago, four or five years ago, um, because I was into sandbox game development at the time. Um, I wanted to make a world that I could just keep adding things to, walking around and, you know, playing God a little bit in a virtual environment. <laughs> uh, so I downloaded this Cam Studio open source software for screen capture I highly check it out if you decide to take the same route I did um, I'll try not to stall too much or you know go off track basically this is what we're gonna do okay so I'm gonna get rid of my little welcoming sign here and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make buildings or a building, okay? What you want to do is, is you want to make sure you have the, in, uh, where is it? Import images as planes add-on activated. This comes with Blender as of 2.72. And I'm going to import building texture. I have a whole bunch of textures I've downloaded from CG textures and others I've taken myself. Um, let's see, what's a good one? Here's this one, okay? So I imported it, and it imports it very tiny, but proportionally correct according to the image, which is very, very handy. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis so it's facing us, if we hit one for front. Um, let's scale it up a bit. Make sure it's on the line. Looks pretty good. And here's the trick, okay? Now, a long time ago, I would do it this way. And I got really disappointed one day when I realized that my way wasn't working anymore. Because when I would do in edit mode a loop cut, it wouldn't do this pull the picture. So that kind of went out the window and then one day some very helpful person, I can't remember the name, but somebody online, probably a Facebook Blender group, uh, I apologize if it was you, but I'm going to undo that line. I'm going to do it again because I lost my train of thought. So as soon as you do that line, it should bring up this box over here or you can hit F6. Oops. 
See where it says correct UVs? Just click that. I'm gonna hit undo to get rid of my loop cut, and I'm going to do it again. But this time, no dragging. It's not a drag. And I'm gonna start cutting along all the straight lines I see in the image that are at a 90 degree angle to the plane. Um, just to make this a quick tutorial, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick one window, okay? That looks good. Okay, do the middle one here. And I'm gonna pretty much box it out. And then I'm gonna go into face mode. Pick the window. Oh, I cut it wrong. Excuse me. I'm gonna pick the window and I'm gonna E for extrude and pop it in. Now, this is a great way when I realized it, to start making the face of a building. Like these other two lines that I cut recently. Will not rotate. You can execute it out a bit. It kind of like pushes it out and makes a ledge. And, you know, obviously if you do this over and over again, um, you'll get some, a pretty good starting point for buildings. Now, um, would do and I wouldn't recommend you do is do all of the building like this. Um, it will come to a point where you'll realize you'll have to start adding to the mesh. Um, and one of the drawbacks is, is when you extrude you get these funky faces that aren't UV aligned. They haven't been unwrapped. So what I'll usually do is, is I'll Cut them out, I'll hit Y, can move it around, and then I will move it to, ah oh, crap, eh. chewing, chewing gum and walking at the same time here, uh, I'll hit P, separate from selection, okay, there it is, and then in object mode, I'm going to hit M and move it to a different box, to a different layer. So now that's there, and this is here. So everything you see in this layer will pretty much be from the original image plane by that method. Y, P, object mode, M, move it to that same layer. Maybe I shouldn't have done it with that one, but oh well. Alright, here we go. We have this uh, imported image of a building, which I believe I got off of CG Textures. If not, I hope I didn't do something wrong. Anyway, um, let's go and we're in edit mode. Okay. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start cutting into this with loop cuts right at the 90 degree angle that I see lines 90 degree from the image plane just make sure you can see it where it starts off in the middle there so I'm just gonna go one two where's my thingy it's such a pain in the butt to find this thing there it is all right I don't know if any of you have that trouble, but uh, it kind of drives me nuts sometimes. I think what you have to do is actually put your cursor on the line you, you want to cut at a 90 degree angle. But I might just be making that up. I don't know. Do I have to talk the entire time I'm doing these tutorials? This is my first one, so excuse me if I sound like a blathering idiot. Silence is golden, they say. Let's put some nice soundtrack music on here so it won't be so distracting. Um. So as you see, I'm pretty much cutting out the windows. And then I'm going to go along the vertical. 
same. I'm trying to do it as close to the glass. I know it's tempting to do it to the building itself, but trust me. What I mean over here, it looks like it's closer. I might have screwed that one up. Let me try that again. Right on the glass. And... Oh, forgot one down here. Okay. So, it's all cut up. For the most part. And these are the key areas that you will be pushing out on the Z-axis. Or well, pushing back. So what I'm going to do is go in face mode. I'm going to select all of these because they're self-similar. Um, and I'm going to hit E for extrude and we're going to pop it in. And bam, we're already in the first step to becoming three-dimensional. You can pat yourself on the back if you're following along. Uh, I'm gonna do it to these a little bit shallower. Make sure this one's cut off right. And that one that looks good. I don't know why, but for some reason this thing seems off center. Maybe it's the angle. Let's just do the door. So I got a little Actually, uh, just because I have this OCD problem. And make sure you have, when you go into loop cut, make sure that you have correct UVs selected. I know I said it before, but it's probably a good idea to make sure. Okay, so extra to the door. I'll get rid of these two bottom planes so it looks a little better. As you can see, it's already starting to look somewhat decent. I mean, if you looked at it fast enough, I'm sure you could convince somebody that it was real. I'm gonna pop that one in. I'm gonna erase these edges because I don't really want them in the end. Try something with the roof. And just do a little bit there. Extrude it outward. Convexly. Alright, so I'm gonna go into uh, right view in orthographic and I'm going to click that, whatever it's called, limits, what does it say? Limit selection to visible. Basically, I want to be able to select everything. You know what I mean. I'm just going to do that with a box select all the way as close as I can to the line. And it has selected everything that I wanted selected, so that's good. Well, almost everything. I missed under here. Ah! And up top, top here. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control V and I'm going to go to Vertex Groups, Vertex Groups and Assign to a New Group. Okay, go up to here. This is your uh, vertex type stuff. I don't know what you call that. Shows group here. It's the one you just made. I'm going to double click and rename it. Uh, I don't know. Windows. Okay. I can deselect it because I don't need it right away. We'll go back to our project here. And you'll notice that there's a lot of edge loops going on here. You might want to just go in and hit X and delete edge loops where you don't really need them anymore. See that one? That's 
Well, that one right there is no good. Um, now, just for my own benefit, what I want to do is select one straight line of segments on the right and one straight line of segments on the left, and I'm going to extrude it on the y-axis, probably, I don't know, let's just say two, two blocks, which in reality is, I suppose, what, two meters, something like that. That is a funny looking building, but we're getting there. All right, so from here, this is what I would usually do. Um, The cool thing about this is that you're in control of the project. So what you want to do is be creative, but smart about it. So this is what I'll do. I'll just take any chunk that looks fairly symmetrical, and I will duplicate it, Shift-D, on the Z-axis, and I'll just bring it up. Bam! And now the building's like what? almost twice as large. And then, I know I made these side ones before, but you might want to try this too. And erase that. Okay. And select the entire face from the front. Go hit 7 for top view. Shift D and right click. Um, to deactiv deactivate whatever you were going to do, hit uh, rotate R 90 degrees. Oh, it would be the other side, so I would go rotate negative 90. See, so now that's facing out. And I'm just going to eyeball it into the corner here close as you can get it. Just like that. And uh, so, just looking at it, I can see a few things that don't look right. For instance, the reflection on the windows is a dead giveaway that it was <laughs> copied. Um, little light to dark, back to light, and to dark. And, you know, I, and I also haven't addressed these other uh, faces that I extruded out which we'll get to. Um, another thing that I noticed was that this middle piece here, which was supposed to be on top, I don't know how I screwed that one up. Uh, okay, let's well, we'll select the bottom piece that we started with. I'm going to hit Y to detach it, and move it up to somewhere. Actually, you know what, let's just line it up with the windows. And we're going to do control, oh, it's not working. Huh. Try to select the whole loop, face loop, and erase. And erase, and erase, and you guessed it. So that looks okay, right? There's other ways of fixing that problem, but you know, that works too. So we're gonna go down to the, you know, line it back up again. Okay, so we got that, but we got these windows, and I think by accident I actually erased... <laughs> it was like a happy accident. I erased the lightest, which was the top row from the middle here. So it actually ends up looking a little bit better than I intended. But for sake of the tutorial, I'm going to skip to my next important part, which is lighting at night. Um, so you know how I selected all of those faces as um, vertex groups? Windows. Select those. Uh, 
Right, it's got this part too. All right, well, forget that. It doesn't matter, it'll look okay anyway. We'll just pretend this is lit up, all right? So what you wanna do is you want to add, you wanna take the, uh, it's called apartment for some reason. It's the name of the material and you're gonna make a new one. And then what you're gonna do is click on the first one, hit this little triangle, copy material, go to your new material, hit the triangle again, and paste. And it makes a duplicate. Um, so you have the exact same material but with two different names. So let's call this one light. And from there, we wanna set the light material to emission. This is going to be emitting light. Strength, I don't know, 10. It's pretty good. Um, we're gonna have to go into the node editor, which you can get to quickly if you hit Shift F3. If you don't know that, uh, Shift function keys is a great way to get around without having to go, oh, where's the arrow? Uh, 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 uh. Found that out a couple days ago. It's weird, like you find out these crucial things, but like towards the end of, well, not even the end, I'll be doing this for a long time, but you get the point. So right now in the image texture node was the original apartment bitmap that I had used. It's uh, weird, because I don't remember using bitmaps in a very long time. Um, and it's going to the emission shader which is then going to the material output what you want to do is you want to take these windows okay and don't forget to assign it to them and you see how they're lit up except they look like pictures inside out right so we're gonna go to the node editor and we're gonna stick a color invert right in between there and what that does is it just turns the image inside out, so your values are flipped. Hopefully, it'll look sort of like what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so... I'm not really from this viewport, but let's see if I render it. It's a little bright. Hmm. Change the factor to one. It's still bright. What's going on here? It shouldn't be that bright. I don't know why it's doing that. All right. Well, you can kind of see it. I guess it was just. So I figured it out. Sorry, coffee machine. I figured it out. Uh, <clears throat> what you want to do is you want to do the image texture. You want to invert it, and then you want to stick a brightness contrast node on it in front of the emission. Um, and what that does is gives you control over how bright it is after you invert it. Yay. So we'll go back to the 3D view. This is what I came up with. I mean, it doesn't look great, but it, at least it's working. I had a better picture in mind. Ooh. And that's where, you know, playing around with it comes in handy. Uh, you can pretty much do whatever your imagination wants you to do in Blender. If you try hard enough. If you, if you actually do the research and you study, and you think about it, you can get the look you're looking for. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, I was going to open the node editor down here. So, so you can see it. Or I can see it. I got it down to like almost negative one. Yeah, see it drops off. So, point oh, 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 point nine. 
point oh nine point nine negative point nine and then I turned up the emission strength let's put it around ten that looks good now this looks like really weird right now right but Get out of the way. We're gonna add a plane. Scale it up so we'll have something to reference. I'm gonna hit uh, Shift Alt Zero on the number pad and Shift F to back up. I'm hitting S to go backwards. I'm gonna render it. You can see it's like pretty light. Um, so, but I already have a light. It, oh, jeez. I already have a light in the scene. I'm gonna erase that. Now the only light is coming from the windows, or you know, the emissive shader that is applied. It's supposed to. My my trick was supposed to make it look more realistic by inverting the color but it almost seems like not doing that looks better so if I get rid of the invert altogether zero kind of like a bluish hue um, but it's a starting point and so from there what I would do if I liked how the windows looked let's just say we do I'm going to take the light material, make a copy, uh, add a new one, paste it, and then rename it uh, light uh, off. Okay. And what I'm going to do is turn the oh shoot, turn the emission down to say. Point one. One. I don't know. And then from there, we are going to start selecting windows randomly. I imagine it's, you know, 10 o'clock at night and you're driving through the city and there's lights, but most of them are off. So, I'm going to select a lot of them randomly and leave some on. As I select these, I'm going to leave these as they are on one side and this for comparison's sake. I'm going to assign the new light off material to the randomly chosen faces. Go to material view and you can see when I render it, that it sort of worked. Probably be better off if I rotate it so you can see it better. Let's just go back here. So there you go. I mean, even more lights would probably look better. So, let me pick that one. Shoot, I can't tell which one's which now. Uh, that one. That one. turn off a lot of them and for the other side as well so this 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 make sure you're only selecting what you need to select and not something else And I'm going to turn those ones off by doing the same. That looks pretty cool. And there you go. Now, just, you know, picture... Let's move the camera. Just picture uh, 
you know, a few of these, like even next to each other. You scale that one up a little bit if you need to. Let me get rid of that one. Eh, just for some reference. There's a lot you can do, and this is just a very simple explanation of it. I wouldn't, you know, from here, I'm gonna cut it from here, but after that, you know, I would add stuff. You see, you see these ledges, these little, these little ledges here. You could like, ah, you know, push those out a bit, and then see, it adds more detail. You could keep doing stuff like that. You can even add stuff that's not even in the picture. Um, down here, for instance, you're not going to want two doorways, two vestibules. You're going to want one, and then the other one is either, you know, just a brick wall or more windows. You just got to consider reality when you're doing this. But it's also very easy to trick the mind. So, I consider it to be one of my number one go-tos. <laughs> How many number ones can you have? All right. So that's it. That's my first tutorial. I hope you take away from it something, <laughs> you know, so it doesn't waste the time. I'm going to have to go back and edit this. And you won't even notice, but we'll see how that works out, too. So, till next time, this is Neil.